A quick housekeeping before we start the program. First, should you want to use the loo? It's just across the road where you have action room one. Please, we we'll advise that you put your phones on silence. At the end of this event, there's going to be a reception in the next block, that is block 80. Take notice of that. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor and the pleasure to welcome you all to the side event be organized by nurses across the borders in conjunction with the United Nations of Youth Network, Green Mobilization Initiative, collaborating with the Delta State Government through the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, the Supertech, and the title of our side event this evening is Building Partnership in Promoting Public Health Through Ecological Restoration. What is at stake? Before I do that, let me quickly recognize in our midst the presence of our invited guests here. Our special guest of honor to this event is the executive governor of Delta State. And that is the person of uh, Right Honorable Elder Sheriff Francis Obovuri. He is the executive uh, governor of Delta State. But today is represented by the secretary to the state government in person of Chief Kisley Eze Emu. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Along with the governor, we have the chairman to the board of the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, who also came with a team. And that is Chief Barrister Obukowo John Nani. <laughs> also, along with uh, the chief, we have the permanent secretary to the Ministry of Environment, and that is Dr. Minimi Oseji. And sitting close to her is the director for climate change, uh, Mrs. Uh, Vivian Briggs. From the Federal Ministry of Health, we have the director for the Climate Change and Environmental Division in person of uh, Mr. Brooks Goswill. <laughs> Along with uh, the guest from the Desobadek, we have uh, Chief Taleb Tebrite, who is the Executive Director of Project. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> and uh, we have the Chairman of the, of the party from Data State, Chief Esiso. You're welcome, sir. Now, on the part of the NGOs that are co-hosting uh, co this event. I have here the founder and the executive director of Green Mobilization Initiative, the person of Mr. Aborile Gabriel is on the panel. <laughs> and sitting very close to Mr. Aborile Gabriel is another of our partner, Ms. Audi Peron. You're welcome. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is the 28th Conference of Parties under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. 18 of those 28 years, noise across the borders have led the civil society from Nigeria in this discourse. And our interest has been in promoting climate change and public health. And that is why today, in collaboration with 
JM Iran is Green Mobilization Initiative, and the United Nations of Youth. I forgot the fourth NGO. That is the Global Alert for the Defense of Youth and the Less Privileged. And that is Gadilip. So they are also co hosting this with us. The Global Alert, you know, they have a joint presentation, which, which will be done by their convener, His Royal Majesty, Dr. Goodluck Obi who is going to be joining us online for his presentation. So without much ado, i just give you a brief uh, remark about the concept for this event. This event is poised to bring its stakeholders to review the problems, progress, and prospects of the successes and failures recorded so far in making health a thematic item and a driver of the climate change campaign by promoting tree planting in mitigation and adaptation strategies for a healthy environment. The theme is building partnership in promoting public health through ecological restoration was at stake. And that is why this evening we're collaborating with a major stakeholder in community development, uh, which is an intervention, interventionist agency of the Delta State in Nigeria, that is Desopatek. So ladies and gentlemen, to kick the ball rolling, we want to start with the keynote address by His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Delta State, Right Honorable Elder Sheriff Oborivori, and uh, the speech will be read on his behalf by the Secretary of the State Government, Chief Kisley Eze Emu. Your Excellency, you are the floor, sir. Yes, sir. You can do better than that. If you want to clap, clap. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I bring you greetings from His Excellency, the Governor of Delta State. He's unavoidably absent, but we rest assured that he has full representation here in, uh, in Dubai. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, we've been here for about four days, and then we have actually gone around a lot of sessions. Today, I had two sessions. And in my opinion, after those two sessions, we believe that climate change challenge should be given the status of a pandemic. When you make climate change a pandemic, then the world will be serious about it. When COVID came, COVID had that status and it was cured. And we think that if we don't do that, like they always say, in the next 20, 30 years, some human existence will go into ex extinction. And the threat is real. And it's important that um, we take this matter very seriously. Uh, let me, please permit me now to go straight to um, the real speech by His Excellency the Governor. Thank you. Address, oh, by, uh, before then, let me correct one impression. I'm not a chief. I am Dr. Kingsley M. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Address by His Excellency, Right Honorable Elder Sheriff F.O. Oborowori, Governor of Delta State, Nigeria, at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCC side event on building partnership in promoting public health through ecological restoration. What is at stake? On Monday, December 11th, 23rd, at the Expo City, Dubai, United Emirates. Officials of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCC Secretariat, members of the Diplomatic Cup here present, the President nurses across the borders, Pastor Peters of Moribon, and collaborating partners, United Nations of Youth Network, Green Mobilization Initiative, and Global Alert for the Defense of Youth and Privilege. The Commissioner for Environment, Delta States, Honorable, jo Honorable Commissioner Jamani Tomi Ejiro, and its Permanent Secretary, Dr. Mrs. Mininim 
or surge. Chairman and representatives of the Delta State Oil Producing Area Development Corporation, the SOPADEC, Chief Obukowo Jonani, and uh, Anulorogun uh, Talib Tebite, Executive Director of Projects. Uh, party Chairman, respected Esiso, Olorogun Esiso Kingsley. The Federal University of um, Petroleum Resources Center for Sustainable Development, Deacon Odugala Okezi. Distinguished guests, members of the press, good evening. I welcome you all to this forum. The theme of this side effect, building partnership in promoting public health through ecological restoration, what is at stake? It's striking and effectual to me personally as a climate change advocate and to the government of Delta State of Nigeria, West Africa. It will help Delta State to shape and align our climate change mitigation and adaptation roadmap to cover more facets and frontiers in climate change mitigation and adaptation. On assumption of office as the governor of Delta State on May 29, 2023, my passion for the environmental sustainability made me to formulate and drive climate change policies towards mitigation and adaptation, as well as just energy transition. As an oil producing state, we strive, we strive to balance between carbon energy, phase out, and green energy. Using Delta State Oil Producing Areas Commission, the SOPADEC, as the key driver of our energy transition in collaboration with nurses across the borders, we are developing an energy transition template with the cardinal framework as just carbon energy, face down, face out, and ushering the new horizon on an El Dorado of green energy sustainable phase in Delta State. Our goal is to set a strong sustainable trajectory and roadmap through which the above goals can be achieved. I thank in a special way the leadership of nurses across the borders and the SOPADEC for the partnership they share, which brought forth the synergy we are concretizing today in this beautiful tangential and vintage platform of COP28, wherein critical issues of loss and damage and evolution of the scorecards of the nationally determined commitments, NDCs, shall be made operational. There could be no better time than now to address this all important subject. I am not oblivious of the dilemma of COP28 Transition Committee of Loss and Damage Fund. I note with concerns the debacle, face-offs, debates for and against the administration and operationalization of the fund. The issues of common but differentiated responsibility, CBDR, World Bank Warehouse of the Fund, and the politics of global North and South. May I use this opportunity? to call on the United Nations and world leaders to prioritize climate change adaptation and mitigation for the world to achieve a 1.5 degrees centigrade threshold. The Earth is the only habitat that we have and the only operational existential platform for humanity and other living and non-living things, whether global south or not. If we allow climate change catastrophe to destroy the earth and the intergenerational equity of our beautiful children born and unborn in global south and global north, without exception, posterity will not be kind to us. It is either we have, we live on the earth by preserving its prosperity for human enjoyment, or we die by the earth by deliberately destroying her through climate change naivety and negligence. This, the most disastrous and irresponsible, irresponsible of my kind, that we could not manage what is freely given to us by nature. I call on world leaders to ward off climate change politics or denials and come to terms with climate change justice. The global south is the worst hit of the climate change induced impact yet underdeveloped. There's great hashtag, hashtag Nigerian climate emergency, especially in Delta State as a result 
For decades, we have been confronted with drought, flooding, climate change, induced internally displaced persons in various IDP camps due to loss of habitats, food insecurity, and health-related issues like pandemics and epidemics. Delta State, as well as Nigeria, is in dire need of loss and damage funding to enable it to ameliorate climate change-induced impacts. A government, through the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, my office and the SOPADEC in collaboration with the Climate Change Office of Nurses Across the Borders, a climate change consultant, shall after this conference seek modalities through which Delta State can assess all climate change funding, benefits, and assistance from the United Nations agencies, partners, world. World Bank groups and other donor agencies for the benefit of Delta State people and Nigeria in general. The state has, through its relevant agencies and line ministries, been able to carry out the following activities as part of its pre coup 2028 20, activities. Visits to Solid Chemicals Recycling Company, Asaba, where polyethylene PET bottles are recycled to produce wool hair products, bus strips. Sensitization of raw millers and smallholder farmers in parts of the state on the use of agricultural waste for briquette production. Sensitization of timber and sawmills association in the state on the use of wood waste, sawdust, for briquette production. Organization of virtual meeting with oil companies operating in Delta State to discuss ways of reducing gas flaring in the state. There's a plan for a post-COP28 activities with relevant stakeholders in the state and partners like nurses across the borders to share best, best practice. To share best practice with oil companies in the, in the management and operational utilization of gas, gas-based flares, and reduction of the green gas emission in the states. There is a plan to carry out feasibility studies of the four clean development mechanisms, CDM projects in the state for the recovery and utilization of associated gas flaring in parts of the state. These projects have been registered with the UNFCCC and their Certified Emission Reduction, CR, will serve as incentives for funding opportunities from international partners and funding agencies in the form of carbon credit. I also use the opportunity to call on investors in green energy, electric vehicle manufacturers, as well as other carbon-free technology and investors, novators, to come and invest in Delta State Nigeria, a peaceful state where favorable climate reports, security, and your return on investment is mostly guaranteed. I trust that deliberation at today's dialogue will result in meaningful outcomes for environmental sustainability. Thank you for your time and attention. God bless you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for that beautiful keynote address. We want to move on to the panel presentations for tonight. And to kickstart that, we have a global represent representative of the ecosystem restoration movement. Since 2004, the speaker I'm about to uh, introduce has engaged in ecosystem restoration, permaculture, and community building. She is a global advisor for regenerative development and systems thinking design strategies. She advocates for earth and water stewardship as well as people well-being. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to the podium Ms. Audi Perone, who will be speaking on healthy ecosystems, healthy community. Audi, please. Thank you for inviting me here. I am working with uh, Gabrielle Aborelli, 
and partnering with him on the Global Mobilization Initiative. And basically, we are part of a global movement. So we are linking local communities to a global movement on ecosystem restoration and where we promote earth and water stewardship, where we realize where healthy communities and healthy co ecosystems can go and grow together. So what we want to promote behind that is how we can promote the people become steward and become active part of the change and bringing the solutions on the ground, promoting also a paradigm shift in the way we interact with nature and the way the health of people and the health of the, of the ecosystem goes together. We work with an inspiring man that has been working and traveling over 90 countries. John D. Liu is here in the room today. And thanks to his inspiration, we've been able to grow 65 communities over the world. So what we, when we look at ecosystems, we look at the way to tackle the different parts of our lives, on the social aspect, on an economical aspect, and on the um, ecological aspect, of course, and how this can become an inspiration. How, as people engage towards climate change, doing what we can with what we have, we can inspire a change on the different level. We want to create regenerative values, an, an economy that is based on the well-being of our ecosystem because this is also the well-being of all the people living in that place. We want to promote food and water security for all, right livelihood for all, because good food and good water promote also healthy communities. And what we see around that is that we probably need to reorganize ourselves and the way we organize the infrastructure needed for all of us, for all our common needs. So, for instance, we envisioned gardens led by the communities and led by the people who best cook this food for everyone who needs food, creating a healthy environment a co-working environment, inviting the communities to come together, to grow food together, to conserve the food together, and also how we can provide food all year round and water quality all year round. We have different, we realize that in the society now we tend to, to make it individual the way we organize our common needs. But maybe if we organize as a community and we organize the space we inhabit around the land we inhabit, we can share much more and spend less, less money having a higher impact on the way we want to interact and on the way we want to inhabit the land we inhabit. So basically, with Gabrielle, what we were talking about when working together is how ecosystem restoration and peace building comes together. We call it a flourishing path where people can thrive, nature can thrive, and where people have that role where we empower the local communities to really become part, to be re really become full um, part of the, of the change we want to see. So we also work on this um, global and local partnership because we believe this can match together. We believe if we unite, we can also help the work um, and the solutions we have come together. But this re requires a way to look at things on the longer term, thinking how on the long term we can bring solutions. So there are immediate needs we need to attend right now, but how can we also provide a long-term agenda and looking at things and how when we build partnership, we can have a space where we gather and look at the results together, where we have some feedback session all together, 
where we contrast what's being done, what's been lacking, what's been missing, what can be done better. And we believe that the, a good partnership is based on this good communication and together learning how we can make it better. So we also understand that this has complexities depending in every localities. But again, as we partner together, we can look at the, at, the, at the problems to find the solutions together. So we just call for this earth and water stewardship and really want to empower and inspire everyone to become part. And, and, um, yeah, and how we can restore the functionality of the ecosystem, how we can plan well and how we can also restore the way we relate with each other as people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Audi, for that presentation and uh, I think you're not only going to work with uh, GMI, so you're calling everybody to be part of your initiative, right? And so we'll be glad to do just that. So moving along, uh, we have in the presentation by His Royal Majesty, is it Dr. Goodluck Obi, who is going to speak to us on tree planting by young people as a climate adaptation strategy for sustainable development in Imo State, Nigeria. His Royal Majesty is a good luck, is a human rights crusader, an environmental climate change advocate, an author of over 15 abstracts, a UN peace ambassador, and a UNFCCC designated contact person. Incidentally, on the very last minute uh, change of schedule, he couldn't make it to COP28. So I have the pleasure to read the paper by His Royal Majesty. UN Climate Change Conference 2023, date 11th December, venue Dubai Expo City, Blue Zone Room, side event one. Tree planting by young people as a climate change adaptation strategy for sustainable development in Imo State, Nigeria. Lessons learned from trees planted by distinguished Senator Hope Uzodima, the executive governor of Imo State, and the two youth-based NGOs with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and also the United Nations ECOSOC status. That is, United Nations of Youth Network and Global Alert for Defense of Youth and the Less Privileged. Tree planting and nurturing of trees was introduced in its highest level with monumental output in Imo State by the administration of His Excellency Distinguished Senator Hope Uzodima, CON. The governor is the people's governor with uncommon pedigree of creativity and sagacity as the governor himself planted many trees and mandated all the chairmen of the whole 27 local government areas of Imo State to plant 10,000 trees in six months. In supporting the good work of the governor in planting and nurturing trees across the 27 local government areas of Imo State, the leaders of United Nations of Youth Network Nigeria, UNOI, and the Global Alert for Defense of Youth and the Less Privileged mobilized young people in primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions to be planted trees periodically. To sustain the momentum of tree planting in the state, the leaders formed green clubs in schools, which were saddled with the responsibility of creating awareness on tree planting including but not limited to other actions and inactions on planting and nurturing of trees and educating the young people on how tree planting would reduce the negative effect of climate change as the case may be. 
the leaders of Unoy and the leaders of Gadilip introduced a grass-rooted oriented program for the youths for the purpose of reducing the negative effects of climate change, which was termed Catch Them Young. This program involves educating primary school and lower secondary school students on a regular basis on how to plant trees and how trees help in reducing the negative effects of climate change. Within this category of children and young people, a green club and climate change club are formed to, the, to be the engine room to navigate the rules and regulations guiding the entire students as they grow up. The rules and regulations become part of them the same way the knowledge and skills they were taught from infant becomes inculcated and part of them in a very long term, if not for life. Hence, it catch them young. Hope Green Revolution. Hope Green Revolution is an ambitious and revolutionary means to contain the climate change in Imo State and in Sub-Saharan Africa. Launched in Imo State by His Excellency Distinguished Senator Hope Uzodima, the flag of ceremony was an event of strategic stakeholders in climate finance, trade, investment, environment, health, transportation, among others. Governor Uzodima also approved the holistic green strategies for a greener and new Imo as the state officially goes green in November 2022 at the government house, Oweri. Here, the governor himself. Although Nigeria is a party to the global green transmission agenda, Imo State is the first sub-national to go green in Africa. Thus, today's event signified a major milestone, another first for our dear state. This should not come as a surprise to anyone, considering that Imo State, under my watch, is blazing the trail on many fronts. In this respect, it will interest you to know that Imo State is also the first state to embrace a full-blown digital economy, being the first state in Nigeria to establish a Ministry of Digital Economy and e-government. Surely, you will agree with me that Imo State is on the march again. Be that as it may, we all know that climate change is responsible for the incessant rains, the attendant floods, and other devastating extreme weather events reported across the world in recent times. We also know that a variety of human activities which result in excessive release of greenhouse gases are responsible for the depletion of the ozone layer, the resultant global warming, and other features of extreme weather, such as flooding. It is reassuring that something as simple as tree planting offers us a chance to contribute to the global efforts to mitigate against climate change and its devastating consequences. The declaration of Imo State going green today is to emphasize that it is henceforth compulsory for everyone who resides in Imo State to plant and nurture trees. In addition, other initiatives aimed at reducing the amount of greenhouse gases released to the environment through everyday human activities to be launched. This includes the adoption of such green energy initiative as in green cook stoves and other energy saving initiative in government offices and buildings. This is an innovative idea aimed at helping to mitigate the damage done to our environment by the indiscriminate activities of man. Although we have been having tree planting campaigns in Nigeria, I believe the current aggressive approach will yield more positive results, partly because many of us now know, the, know that climate change is real. That was the end of uh, Israel Majesty's uh, paper. And that was the end of the comment by the governor of uh, Imo State. So going further, we we'll move on to, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So quickly, we move on to the next panelist. And uh, he is the founder and executive director of the Green Mobilization Initiative. He holds a master's degree in forest ecology and conservation and a bachelor's degree in forestry and wildlife management. An environmental forestpreneur, CUME, climate change activist. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I have the pleasure to introduce Gabriel Aborele, who will be speaking to us on promoting ecological restoration in schools and adjoining communities through tree planting. Mr. Aborele, the floor is yours. Your Excellencies, the representative of the Delta State Government, and uh, every other person, please let me stand on the existing protocol. My name is Gabriel Aborele. I'm the founder, president, Green Mobilization Initiative. Well, I will be talking on uh, promoting ecological restoration in schools and adjoining communities through tree planting. Nature remains the most precious gift to humanity. We depend on landscape for our survival as it provides food, water, clean air, a stable climate, and many more. However, its management has resulted in various, its mismanagement has resulted in various environmental challenges, which is endless. For instance, flooding, we hear of conflict, especially in Nigeria. Farmer headers conflict every now and then. And if you look at this situation, you discover that land has become a very contentious issue because of its mismanagement. You see that people, because of the attachment we have to land as humans, because land plays a very important role in our survival. And once the land is healthy, be rest assured that uh, we humans will be healthy at the same time. So what we are doing here is to see how we can connect ourselves back to nature. And in doing that, we feel that the younger generation will play a very key role in this. And most of our activities is done around Abuja and so many other states in Nigeria, whereby we go to regulatory agencies of schools because we discover that you can't just jump into any place, even if it is a public land, and begin to plant trees there. So especially looking at uh, Sustainable Development Goal 17, partnership. So we go out for partnership with regulatory agencies of schools who gives approval for us to go into these schools, look at the master plan, and find out where it will be suitable to have the trees, which we have been doing, and we have planted a lot of trees around Abuja and Ogun State and so many other places. This we do to raise awareness on tree planting and highlight positive uses of trees and nature-based solutions for the prevention of biodiversity and climate change mitigation. Please, okay. This is some of the things we have done. Flip. Okay, we have used also tree planting as a peace building mechanism. For instance, in Kaduna State, where we know religious crisis prevailed over time that has splitted even the state into two different communities of Christians and Muslims. At a certain point, we brought people from the divide to plant trees together and everybody was happy, which means there is a lot we can really do together. That is the more reason we are forming partnership with our partners, Aounde, from Ecosystem Restoration Camp. This is something Nigerians should really plug into whereby land should be made available where ecological restoration will be taught, especially to people in Abuja, for instance, we have people who are even homeless, they don't have where to stay. They can be factored into it. Where there will be common kitchens, everybody will be doing things together for the purpose of restoring land. It is achievable if we plug into this opportunity. So these are some of the schools where we have planted, like in Federal University of, uh, Inter uh, Federal University of Agriculture, their, their school, their, the secondary school. So many Federal College of Education, both their secondary school. 
We have planted in over 26 schools so far. And we need collaborations to be able to reach out to the 77 sec uh, senior secondary schools that is in Abuja that we have been given approval to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Aburile. One second, please. Quickly, we want to move to the interactive uh, sessions, questions and comments, and uh, we have just nine minutes to do that. So if you have any questions you want to ask, or you have a comment you want to make, you please, can we have the microphone please? Thank you very much. Please introduce yourself. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Dr. Mrs. Mini, which is short for Mini Nim Oseji, Permanent Secretary, Delta State Ministry of Environment. And I'd like to ask the last speaker, you talked about planting trees in 26 schools. Do you have the number of those trees? And how do you monitor to make sure that those trees survive? Because it takes up to about two years before the trees can stand on their own. Yeah. Thank you. You can, you can okay. answer from there. Okay. Thank you very much for that question. In fact, what we we'll do, one of the strategy we adopt, any school we go into, we look out for, especially the GSS1 students, that we know will have a long period to stay in that school, like six years or, or five years, as the case may be. So they are entrusted to plant and nurture those trees. And the success stories is amazing, man. We, there is a particular school where they used to hold, maybe during their visitation day, they used to rent canopies. That is no longer the case. They have an orchard that families can take their mats to, have their refreshment, and go home. In terms of the numbers of trees, we are lucky that, just like I said, the collaborations we have with certain ministries, like Ogun State Ministry, has given us 10,000 seedlings. And we have uh, Abuja Park and Recreation every year. They keep calling us, please come and have seedlings. We have it available. So we have these seedlings which we give. In short, we have planted over 15,000 15, trees in schools. And I think this can equally be replicated even in Delta State, where we have, uh, so it's, it can be replicated anywhere. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. It's, it's talking, sir. It's talking. It's working. It's working? Yes. Do I need to operate? No, no, okay. just, no, no just go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, thank you so much. I, I particularly, your partner, yeah. like her approach the social infrastructure for local impact, linking local communities to the healthy ecosystem. And I like the fact that she looked at the uniqueness of every community, not just doing a one cap fit all strategy in reaching out. So it would be interesting to know how many communities they have been able to reach out to. I mean, just to share some, some peer review and let's share some experiences and see how that has worked and why that cannot be mainstreamed globally into the entire climate change process, because that is the way to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other? OK. Please introduce yourself. No problem. Introduce yourself and the. Uh... Uh, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and the esteemed panelists. Uh, my name is Muhammad Danbapa. I am a f founder of a waste management company here in Dubai. We come across many organizations and many entities really interested to go back to certain places like Nigeria in particular to plant such kind of trees. 
but the reaction that we typically get is like, what is the transparency and what are the governance associated with it? How are they going to show, or how are going to make sure that their pro the commitment that they make is well maintained and uh, it's a trustworthy situation? So if, please, from the panel panelists, you can highlight some of these uh, concerns, then we can go back to these uh, NGOs or organizations that are really willing to do the right thing, but they are afraid because of some bad experience or not. Thank you. You want to respond? Okay, let's just take, you know, let's just take the questions and then, please note the questions that uh, relate to you. Uh, you want to say something, sir? So, okay. So, no, no, okay, give it to him. Give it to him, please. Good evening, everybody present. My name is uh, Engineer Dr. Christopher Giba. Although I'm a PhD holder on water and environmental, environmental health. So we, I'm a member of global initiatives. There are certain things why one of the concerns he raised, not the perception you people had about Nigeria. Because we are, that is why we are coming on board to let you know Nigeria is not what you heard about them. We live there, we grew up there. We are still there today. What people are saying about Nigeria is not the right thing. Because most people you people come across are the wrong persons. Like with the global initiative, if you come through this initiative you want to plant, you heard what he said because we collaborate with the government. Because you cannot just go to an environment, go to a school without collaborating with the communities or the people around there. Because most people will come to you, they will say, okay, come to Nigeria without passing the due process. For instance, it measures some state. If data give us the opportunity tomorrow, we partner with the government, we meet with them, they give us the security, they give us the area, they tell us where to go, you are safe. But if you come through the wrong people, you are not. Because those people that come here and start telling you sorts of things, they are not the right person. So I will assure you that if you come through our NGO or any other government agency that are aware, just like we came to Dubai, the government is aware we are here. We didn't just jump into Dubai and start doing what we like. Wherever we go, they are aware. Also Nigeria. So once the government and the uh, many of us who live there are aware that you are there. You will be protected. Your investment and everything you have will be protected. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And uh, just because, we're gonna, okay, sir, you want to re quickly I can, respond? I can actually comment further on that. You talked about transparency and governance. Your local partner is very critical. And you must have a local partner in any business you do outside your climb to be able to be successful. That's the man who takes who and carries you to practical everywhere and understands all the developments in that area. And the issue of governance becomes sustainability, as it were. If you link up with the right people, Delta State is prepared for all of this. And that's why we're linking up with um, the nurses across board and dealing across borders. And if we could come here in our numbers, it shows a lot of commitment. So you need a lot of commitment and you need a good local partner to have a successful outing. We're interested. Thank you very much, sir. Last comment, please. My name is Bani, the Executive Director of Lake Development Foundation. We focus on the uh, issue of climate change, gas flood, oil space, and pollution in Niger Delta, particularly. Oh, thank you so much. I must commend, I must start to commend the Delta State government as you whole because I'm indigent of that uh, region and I'm seeing a kind of awareness campaign and interest they have, especially when we talk about climate change. We have 36 states that make up Nigeria today, but if you can see how Delta State coordinated, coordinate themselves and be at this uh, uh, conference and talk about the issue that is worrisome about our people and the global environment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, let me just go straight to the question so that will not take much of the time. Ma, you talk about a healthy ecosystem and a healthy community. 
What strategy, what plan do you have for especially Niger Delta region, a region where research have said that is the most polluted place on the planet, where research have said that the average lifespan of the region is standing at 41 years, where we continue record uncontrolled gas flailing and on, on account of oil spill within that region. How can we promote this public health in that community? What strategy, what partner do you have for the region particularly? So it goes straight to you, thank you. Sorry, before you comment, can I just interject? Now, the Audi is partnering with a Nigerian entity. Now your, your question is to the Niger Delta. They do not have any activity in Niger Delta. So if, I, if you don't mind, I want, to re, I want to rephrase your question that our initiative is good, which should be replicated in every other part of the country. And if there are strategies mm -hmm. that they have that have worked so well in other communities, that can also be replicated in the Niger Delta. But beyond that, whatever is happening today, is the fact that, yes, the Niger, the Delta State Government, who is central to the Niger Delta region, is very committed to what they are doing as far as climate change mitigation and is concerned, which is why what is happening today is going to be part of those things. And at the end of these activities, everyone that you see on the table here, what brought us together is partnership, which is working in line with the, the UNFCCC uh, mandate for us to unite, to act, and to deliver. So I would, I would say that uh, you be patient. The relationship between GMI, known as Across the Borders, which should be transcended to the Delta State Government, would also bring to bear answers to your question. So I'm not trying to preempt your response, but I just want to take that out because we move into our next uh, uh, issue. I hope that settles your answers, if you don't mind. I can talk with Thank you. you very much. But quickly, if you can just have take one minute response. One minute response. Well, first of all, I, I'm a global representer, right? So I work with local communities everywhere around the world. And I'm, or we always respond to a demand that we have from a local partner. We never come with a solution. We come to hear the needs. We come to listen the needs. We have a good network and we see what is useful within our network to bring to that specific place if it is asked for. And this is for us very essential, and this is for me as a white representative very important to do uh, when I collaborate with other continents, right? So that's, that's a very first point that's important. And then it's, again, the partnership in, 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 in my case with Gabrielle, who is local, who is teaching me what's happening on the ground. And I'm listening, and then from there we look at the solutions. And from the ground, this has to come from a collective intelligence, from a collective consortium of people that come together saying, OK, we all agree that we want to tackle those issues. And then we look for the solutions. And as, as we bring together the local network and the global network, we think that we can be more powerful together to give those, those, those answers. Thank you very much. And it is to uh, put action to those uh, initiatives that we're moving on to the next uh, item on our agenda. Now, Delta State, I'm a Nigerian. I'm not from Delta State. But I have, over time, uh, witnessed and uh, observed the happenings in Delta State. We used to be one, Bender, I'm from Edo State anyway. Um, when we had the collaboration with the Federal University of Petroleum Resources Center for Sustainable Development. In fact, we had that collaboration and uh, we entered into an MOU April last year. When I was giving the keynote address, I promised at that podium that we will use our connection, we use our resources, we use our years of interaction with the United Nations since 2002 to see how we can provide support for sustainable activities with that center. And that led us to uh, Sham Eshek last year, as we had two major side events, and which the Tether State Government participated actively on. The governor was to be there, but because of the electionary then, where she was, it was represented by a high-level government official. 
So that relationship began since last year. And uh, this year, when the new governor was elected and was sworn in, he followed, he continued with the same stride of his predecessor. And when we reached out to the government through the interventionist agency, uh, which is Delta State Oil Producing Area Development Commission, they were open to the collaboration. They saw all that needed to be done because number one, if there is anything that needs to be done, if you need to uh, carry out any local initiative, it is those that are adversely affected who feels the brunt that the campaign should start from. And that is why the Zubadek was open to this uh, interaction uh, with me with the government. And today, through discussions and meetings, we've agreed that there will be an MOU that will be signed between nurses across the borders, international, and the Delta State Oil Producing Area Development Commission. And so ladies and gentlemen, we are just going to carry out that process. When we come to COP, the UNFCCC and the UN agencies want to see what we are doing. It's not enough for us to come, engage in one activity or other, but they just want to see to what extent are we engaging not only the local population, but to what extent are we engaging those in governance. As civil society, there are little you we can do without this support and collaboration from the government. And so we're happy that this data state government is very I mean, is leading on this initiative through the Zopatec, and that the reason and the essence for this MOU is that at the end of this event, as we go back to Nigeria, we begin to strategize and begin to execute. We reach out to partners, you, whatever that is going on here, partnership um, initiative, would, you don't have answers to all the questions. So what I have, GMI may not have it. But we'll bring all our thoughts and initiate together to the common goal of the people. So ladies and gentlemen, we want to move on to that. And uh, I want to call on, I'm going to share, I'm going, I want to call on the chairman of Desopatek, uh, that is Chief Obuko John Nani, sorry, Chief Barrister Obuko John Nani, to please uh, stand up for this uh, ceremony. Please, a hand of applause. <laughs> and it will be joined by the executive director, special project, what of uh, Olorogu uh, Taleb. Okay, fine. Well, we can just start. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't have, I don't have the power to make you. As I said, he needs to sign first, if I sign. Of course, sir. Can you come and sign? It's on, it's on. It's on, it's on. So I'm going to hand over one to you and I'll take this. So can they let him take a picture? Uh, so let me, let me, please let me have one. Please. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank uh, Chief Barrister Obuko Jonani for his support and collaboration. We're moving on to the almost the last item. They said honor is given to whom honor is due. We do not just talk, but we do the talk. If in 18 years of my activities with the UNFCCC, I identify a champion of the climate change, I have every authority to do it because I have been around for a long while. It is not how far the mother is life, it is how well. And so today, we want to honor Sorry, technical clue, please. <laughs> yes, thank you. Today, we want to honor Delta State and the Delta State Governor for their bold climate change initiative. That is why the face of Delta State is the number one citizen of the state, and that is the person of right, honorable, Elder Sheriff F. O. Oborowori. This afternoon, we are going to honor him this afternoon, we are going to honor him with an award, and that award is Climate Change Champions. CCC is the first recipient of this award. When we were planning and looking at how we we're going to do this, I had a discussion with UNFCCC. In fact, what they did was to also request that we make this a yearly event. That means every year we identify climate change champions that will be accorded this honor. Just a brief remark as to who Right Honorable Sheriff is. You can see his profile. The next page, please. Okay, sorry, I have no All right, sorry. Yeah, that's the gentleman there. See, these are some of the uh, these are, some, these are some records of, the, of his uh, background. He came into governance, well prepared, before he became a governor of Delta State, he was a two-time speaker of the House of Assembly. In fact, in the history of Delta State, there has not been any speaker that has done two-time. So he was the first two-time speaker. So because of time, we are not going to I mean, these are some of the awards at the, that was in the United Kingdom. He has, apart from governance, he has a lot into, he's into construction, he's into equipment leasing, and he's, he's also into hospitality. That is the fine young gentleman. He's an old man, but he looks so young there. So I want to call on the, His Excellency, right? Honorable Elder Sheriff F. Oborowori to receive his award, and that is the Climate Change Champion Award, and that will be received on his behalf by <laughs> Dr. Kisley Eze Emu, the State <laughs> Secretary. <laughs> on behalf of Noise Across the Borders, we are giving you this first Climate Change Champion Award in recognition of your outstanding performance in the mitigation of the effects of climate change in Delta States and your contribution to the Multi-Stakeholders Partnership Initiative for implementation of the UNFCCC adaptation strategies. At the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference, COP28, at the Expo City, today the 11th of December. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, on behalf of His Excellency, the Governor of Delta States, I would like to say thank you um, for this recognition. Um, we're committed to this course. We're going to continue to pursue this case until it becomes a pandemic. Because it is not possible for us to treat climate change cases in isolation. And therefore, all hands must be on desk. And to God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next on our list of our deeds. Today, we're having this initiative with the data state, and it was made possible by another active climate change advocate. He's a trained lawyer, he's a politician, he's a businessman, and the current chairman of Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, Desu Patek. And that is our friend and brother, Chief, sorry, Olorogun Barista, John Obukowo Nani. On behalf of us across the border, sir, we have the pleasure to present you with this award in appreciation of your outstanding contribution to the climate change campaign globally and for setting this strong foundation for the Delta State Climate Change Program at the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change COP28 here in Dubai, Expo City. Well, I dedicate this award to the immediate past governor who took it as something innovative for him to see climate change as a dynamic <coughs> change, positively for the last state to be in forefront. I was made commissioner for environment by him, and he gave all the enablement for me to perform and be well grounded in climate change. I never supported it on my own, but because of the enablement that was given to me by the governor of the United State, His Excellency Ato Ifai Okoa, I dedicate it to him. Our last AOD was appointed head, Special Climate Change Unit, Federal Ministry of Environment, Nigeria, in 2008, as well as a designated national authority and focal point person for reduced emissions from deforestation and degradation, RED. As Nigerians lead, net experience it was appointed special climate change it was appointed nigerian's lead negotiator and also it was he led nigeria to the conference of parties meeting in pozna and cop 15 copenhagen in fact copenhagen was one of the best cop we've ever attended in nigeria by the nigerian delegation the man I'm about to introduce made sure that all the delegation from Nigeria, not just the government uh, delegation, delegates, including the civil society, we went to Kobengi as one family. But ever since we've never experienced such uh, interaction. He is a member of the Committee of Conference of African Heads of States and Government on Climate Change. In 2010, he could chair of African Group of Negotiators in the UNFCCC negotiation process. He's a member of expert groups 
on feasibility study and impact assessment of possible market-based measures of the International Maritime Organization, representing Nigeria 2010. He's also a member and national focal point for the World Bank Clean Technology, Clean Technology Fund, representing Africa in 2010. He's a member of Enforcement Branch of the Compliance Committee, Enforcement Branch of United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. As a nation's designated, as a nation's designated national authority, for clean development mechanism projects led the country in the registration of four CDM projects in two years. Nigeria now has five CDM projects registered. The expected volume of carbon credits to be generated per year is over 1% of worldwide expected carbon credits to be generated, making Nigeria the 10th country in the world of CDM in terms of yearly credits to be generate, generated. In 2018, he was appointed managing director Telco Europe, Nigeria. Appointed co-founder Greenplate Africa Limited. And in 2020, he was appointed member of the Policy and Technical Advisory Committee of the Honorable Minister of Environment. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the person that has this award is Dr. Victor Ayodeji Fodeke, but incidentally, he had to travel. He was, he's been in COP since the beginning, but he has to travel. May I call on uh, uh, Mr. Brooks to take this award on his behalf? He is going to Abuja. And so, Mr. Brooks, please, can you please kindly take this award on behalf of uh, Dr. Vito Foteke? Please, can we clap for him? So, on behalf of Mr. Cross the Borders, we present this award to you, Dr. Vito Foteke, in recognition and appreciation of the of as the pioneer national focal point for Nigeria in the climate change campaign and for setting the strong foundation for the nation's climate change program. Uh, the, today, at the United Nations Football Commission COP28 here in Dubai. So, like this. Thank you very much. Want to say something? Yeah. Yes. So, um, I am delighted to receive this award on in behalf of Victor Fulake. I am of the Federal Minister of Health, and I'm happy to see a federal, a federal staff to receive such an award, because it is the federal government of Nigeria, and a focal point. I'm a focal point for health of Nigeria now, so I will present this award to him, and we are also delightful to be here to see the nurses across the border to go this length, and we are happy, and we are asking you to continue with your good work. And I will let the Honorable Minister of Environment to know this, and the National Focal Point, who is the entry pussy, to know of this award. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And so, we're going to have our closing remarks. We have 10 minutes. We're working with time. And I'll have the pleasure to call on Chief Barrister Obukowo Jonani for the closing remarks. Adopting all protocols, so line up here. My job is simple because all we've discussed here since is on the issue of ecological restoration. Climate change today is because of the degradation of the ecological system. Therefore, we need ways to restore this destroyed ecology that is affecting humanity. It's not a fight for government. It's not a fight for the individual. But globally, like she said, it is the data 
from the locals that the globe will work it. We were told here that if we look at it as a mere disease and not epidemic, the world, human, will be consumed. Therefore, all hands must be on deck because We're talking of tree planting. If you don't go to the grassroots, those locals, and let them know why they need trees, they were planting it before, it had to, not knowing it's for carbon sequestration, it's for carbon credit. They came up on their own and started destroying the forest by deforestation. But we need to let them know that it is deforestation that is making us today feel the impact of industrialization, which has brought climate change that we are fighting today. Discussions have told us the way forward. We have had states that have gone to planting trees. Trees can be named after students in schools. And you see it as part of you, as you are in JS1. By the time you will leave in school, in SS3, the tree will be six years old then the tree can sustain itself. Other territorial way for us to see to it that carbon credit is gained must be from the grassroots. This is not the one we see in CNA. We must take it back. The technology which The global north today is talking about they should also bring it to the global south so that the world, the globe, would have seen climate change as an ailment that everyone needs to cure. I think that is the restoration of the ecological degradation that brought us here today. In this consumption, I think is a conclusion. If we can encapsulate all this, we will definitely defeat climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Dicking, could you please share our T-shirts and the face cap, starting with the members of the air table, quickly. Please hurry up, we have five minutes. So we're gonna give you T-shirts and face cap as a memorial of this event today. Give me the and then you please, you please do us a favor, just put it on. If you cannot put it on because of what you are wearing, you're gonna hold it to your chest because we're gonna have a group photograph. Yeah. But you must use the face cap, you can put on, give, let them have, must, they must have their face cap. Let me have my, let me have my face cap, please.
So please, yeah. just if you cannot use it, please put on the face cap. We're going to have a group photograph before the vote of thanks, quickly. We have four minutes, two seconds. Please put, just put on your face cap. Please, whatever is available, please take. Just, please, I beg you. All right, give a chairman his own face cap. Please give to the people behind. Look at the ladies behind, please. Okay. <laughs> Where are the paparazzi? Shall we all rise up, please? Shall we all rise up? What are the paparazzi? Please, can you please come to the, use your, take, take the picture, come to the podium, please. Please come to the podium with your car. Turn back to the podium. We have two minutes. We said, please, please. All right, take the picture. Drop, drop it, drop it, t shirt you come, come up to the come to the podium where you waiting for. Come here. Don't worry, don't worry, bring it to me. Come this way, come this way. No, you have my wife. You have my wife. Stay with myself. Yes, sir. Wow. Come, come. Please join us. Please take the pictures. Please take the pictures. Please take the pictures. Sister Ito, please take the pictures. Good. Take the pictures. Thank you. I'll say Delta. Delta. Are you afraid to say this state? Delta. Delta. <laughs> Delta. Delta. <laughs> wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Somebody join? Okay. All right. Uh, you have less than one minute? No. Yeah, one minute, yes. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, no, they will finish it. They want to do, want to do something. Go ahead. On behalf of nurses across the border. Please sit down, please sit down. The program is not yet over. Please sit down. We want to say uh, thank you to His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Delta State, and our Sheriff Francis Oborowori, ably represented by the SSG, Dr. Kingsley Emu, our own father, Lorogu Barisa John Nani, thank you so much. Our party chairman, who is today a green ambassador and the chairman of the Green Party. Thank you so much. Then we want to thank uh, all the partners, UNF, uh, C, uh, civil society members, government representatives from the academic, and everybody that is here. Thank you, thank you, God bless you, and we wish you well as you journey back from COP28. Better, we partner for environmental sustainability. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your time. We meet next year at the COP29. But which country is also COP29? Azerbaijan. So we meet in Azerbaijan in COP29. God bless you all.